Joe Gold is the rugby league correspondent in Brisbane for the AAP, and he joins me now to talk about the Dolphins. Uh, Wayne Bennett has been signed on as the coach, and he's probably busy trying to fill every spot in the roster at the moment. And I think, uh, Joel, very much for your time, for joining us here this afternoon. Uh, there's still about five spots to fill, I understand, on the roster, correct? Uh, yes, uh, great, to, great to chat to you. Yes, Wayne, um, Wayne did a press conference uh, this week where he said there's five Five more spots to fill. Uh, he, he's mainly looking in the outside back area. Of course, um, he would have liked to have uh, signed Cameron Munster to the to the spine, but that would have been for 2024. But Cameron uh, elected to re-sign with Melbourne. But uh, Wayne said he's got five spots left for 2023. Um, he's hoping to sign um, Tessie New from the Broncos, who's been given permission to negotiate with other clubs. And, and Tessie, of course, is a fullback, so he would add depth to the spine area if they can sign him. Uh, okay, the fact that they've signed Wayne Bennett tells us, I suppose, all we need to know about uh, the fact that this uh, entity has got some serious money. Who's behind it? Who owns it? Well, the, the Dolphins are a, a privately privately um, owned and run, run club. Um, it's, it's backed by the Dolphins group, which is um, a very well, one of the appeals to the NRL was the fact that the, the Dolphins have um, a, a wonderful um, financial backing. They've got their own um, stadium out there at Redcliffe. Everything's in place. Um, but of course, like every other NRL club, that the, the football department and, and the playing group is is funded by the salary cap, which every every NRL club has. Um, so really. Uh, they're in the same boat as everybody else. I, I Although, except, ex- except Joel, um, uh, Bennett wouldn't come cheaply, would he? No, I don't suppose he would. Um, <laughs> like Wayne's not one to uh, actually say, and, and we don't know exactly how much he's on, but, I mean, Wayne's a million-dollar man, so he's not cheap, um, Wayne Bennett, and neither, neither should, not should he be. Obviously, he's um, one of the most successful coaches in the history of rugby league, and, um, yeah, I think... I think the fact that Bennett is the coach and, and was going to be the coach was a huge, a huge driver for the NRL giving the the license to the Dolphins. Although the other the other big teams that that, that went for the license also um, had Wayne uh, lined up, but uh, no Bennett's Bennett's on on deck and uh, that's that's going to be you know a big a big coup not only for the Dolphins but for the National Rugby League to know that. There's stability there at that club in a, in a coaching sense. Um, Wayne, Wayne will finish his coaching tenure, we believe, at, at, at the Dolphins, although he did suggest the other day that even when he finishes there, don't write him off for continuing on. So we that, should, was, that was quite interesting. We shouldn't be obsessing ourselves with age, but how old is uh, Bennett, incidentally? Uh, Wayne Wayne would be... Uh, he's in his early... Look, I, ha, I I should know this, but he's either 70 or 71 in okay. that, that, that bracket. But... Uh, Look, Wayne keeps himself in fantastic nick, um, and I think he's refreshed, actually, just uh, talking to him during the week. He, he actually said that he, he felt refreshed after having a year off from the, the, the day-to-day coaching in the NRL. So that that's the first time mm. he, he's had a year off, it's, I, I don't know, since how long as a coach, uh, going back to when he started. So I, I think he's he's got a second wind, and he knows all about starting a foundation club like he did at the Broncos back in 1988, of course. So how has Bennett's signing gone down in Brisbane? Oh, look, um, the the Broncos, I mean, Wayne Wayne left the Broncos and went down to coach South Sydney. Um, when he came back and, and, and uh, was announced as the Redcliffe coach, I mean, I've spoken to Kevin Walters, the, the Broncos coach, about this, and he's... He, he said it's great for the game. You know, obviously he's um, he's had a lot to do with Bennett over the years. Um, the Broncos are well aware of the pulling power of Bennett, and we've seen already um, the Dolphins um, have uh, great success in a, in a corporate um, sense uh, in, in signing sponsors. And uh, of course, <laughs> for a long time the Broncos had things their own way in in, in Brisbane. Um, Really, apart from that little stint the South Queensland Crushers had, so so I mean Bennett, Bennett's a threat. Bennett and the Dolphins are definitely a threat to the Broncos, um, in the sense that they're 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 a competitor. They're Absolutely, right on the yeah. 
That, that's right. And uh, yeah, look, no matter what uh, Kevy says, Kevin Walters says about um, welcoming Wayne, um, being excited to have them there, it's great for the game. Of course, uh, Bennett's a threat, and he, he will be looking to sign Broncos players, as he is with Tessie New, who's been given permission to negotiate for next year. Um, so it's competition. It's, mm. uh, yeah, right there on their doorstep. Yes, if you're a rang, young, promising rugby league player in Brisbane or Cairns or any of these places, um, you could have a very bright future with without even leaving the state with, what, four now? I think, isn't it, four teams from next year from Queensland and the NRL. Looking at the, the roster so far, uh, Joel, there's a few names that are familiar to us on this side of the Tasman, the Bromwich brothers. It's a good deal. Maybe they got... <laughs> Two for the price of one from Melbourne, Cody Nikarima and uh, Jermaine Isako as well. Um, are, are there any names being bandied around uh, that you've heard of or maybe reporting on yourself um, who could fill those last remaining spots? Because there can't be many, if any, really good players still out there on the market. Well, that's a very good question. And uh, look, a lot of the a lot of the the stories that we've written and that we've seen being written are about Wayne recruiting players for 2024. Like a lot of guys, like for instance Dylan Brown at the Eels is off contract at the end of 2023, so he's not available for for, for 2023. And I think so much has been written about what was going to happen in 2024. And Munster, Cameron Munster, would have been available then if he hadn't re-signed with Melbourne. But the, the really now, the, the key is for Bennett and the Dolphins is, is what it's not 2024. That's two seasons away. It's what's going to happen this year. And th- there aren't many players available. You're quite right uh, at the moment. There, there, there is often flux. Um, the, the, the NRL player market is fluid. And sometimes we see players uh, be, like, like Tessie New, who's on contract to the Broncos for next year, being given permission to negotiate and, and to, to, to sign a deal. But Wayne is really, I think, depending on a lot of that sort of thing happening to fill his final five spots. I mm. don't think he's going to get a blue chip player, yeah, like yeah. a big a big name to add to the list that he's got. <laughs> but the the players you mentioned, the Bromwich brothers, uh, Felice Kafusi, um, although he's obviously not a not, not a New Zealander, not not a New Zealand um, player, um, but the ones you mentioned, it gives you an indication of the sort of coach Bennett is and the sort of team that the, the Dolphins are going to be. He has signed some wonderful forwards, forwards with real pedigree. And I think that's the sort of team Bennett wants. He wants to have a, a pack that knows exactly what they're doing. He signed Mark Nichols from South Sydney, who played his best football under Bennett. So what you've got is a forward pack that can do the business. It's tough, it's reliable. Um, Wayne doesn't have to coach them too much. They already know what to do. Uh, the, the, the challenge for, for Bennett and the Dolphins will be getting the back line to fire. And um, we've got Anthony Milford, um, who Wayne has coached before, at, at probably going to play number six. We've got Jermaine Asako, as you mentioned. Wayne's coached him before and he played his best football under Bennett. He'll be on the wing. Um, Nick Arima, of course, can play um, a variety of positions in that utility role, which Wayne has also, who Wayne has also coached before. So you've got, what you've got here is Bennett's men. Really, um, that he's he's brought in a lot of players that he's coached before that play their best football under him, and that's that's the key, I think, to looking at how the Dolphins might go. So, what are the realistic expectations for the Dolphins in this first season? I mean, I, I guess if you are being realistic, and I can go back to the uh, opening season that the Warriors had, you know, m- many moons ago, and they'd signed a whole array of superstars from Australia and England and local players, and they struggled because they were a new unit, uh, inexperienced, a lot of those players, and I imagine it'll be a struggle, won't it, for the Dolphins next year, regardless of how many uh, big names they sign it's their first year together um inevitably there'll be teething trouble so what's a realistic goal for them could could they make the playoffs do you think or is that a bit beyond them in the first year look as as rugby league journalists we all tip our top eight and the dolphins aren't won't be in my top eight i can i can assure you that but i think the one thing uh, if you look at the bookmakers, they've they've got the Dolphins' favourites to finish with a wooden spoon. I don't believe they will finish with a wooden spoon. I think they'll do a lot better than that. Um, I think mid-table would be a good result for the Dolphins to start mm. to start off with, considering considering the fact that they really don't have 
in the spine positions. And if you look at the keep, the, the, the best teams in the NRL, if you look at the Sydney Roosters, if you look at Penrith, if you look at South Sydney, and you look at Parramatta, the, the, the teams that have finished, and, and of course the Melbourne Storm, if you look at those teams, they've got internationals, um, some of the best players in the game in those spine positions, and, and, and the Dolphins simply don't have that. Mm. So I, I just think that's that's going to be a, a battle for them, um, scoring points. But one thing I do know about Wayne Bennett coach teams, and I've watched them and, and dealt with them for many years, is that they, they compete from the first minute to mm. the last. Mm. Uh, Wayne, will get, Wayne will get more out of them than other people would have. And I think mid-table, this is my view, I think they'll be a mid-table team and they'll do better than a lot of people think they will. That's my, my tip. Yes, sounds like you might be pretty close to the mark, I think, uh, Joel, based on what we've seen in the past with new teams. Anyway, Joel Gould uh, from Australian Associated Press, I thank you very much indeed for this very informative chat on the makeup and the look of the new team, the 17th team in the NRL next year, the Dolphins. No, thanks very much, and uh, we, we look forward very much to watching them play, and um, I look forward to the Warriors as, as well. Um, playing, and I, I do hope that uh, Sean Johnson can re, re, reclaim his best form because I think living in New Zealand uh, again, I think that's going to be a great um, breath of fresh air for Sean. So mm. I look forward to that as well. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate your time. Thank you.